But we're going to look in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 10 has already been read for your hearing. So I will read verses 1 through 3. Luke chapter 11. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 3. And it says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and he, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. These last couple of weeks we have been coming from It's Time to Build. We're going to lay that down for a little bit and pick it back up a little later sometime. But today I want to begin uh, a new series um, entitled Praying Between the Lines. Praying Between the Lines. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship together. God, thank you, God, for your spirit, God, that have already met us in our places of worship. Thank you, oh God. God, that your power, oh God, rests right in, Father God, the homes of your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, even though that we cannot meet together, oh God, in this church, in this worship, Father God, place. God, we thank you, oh God, that our houses, our homes have become places of worship. God, we thank you for your spirit, God, your protection, God, that is on each and every one. God, we don't take it for granted, oh God, that we're here right now, God, in the land of the living with good, with a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, we don't take it for granted. We want to say thank you, Lord. You didn't have to do it, God, but in spite of God, you kept us, Lord. And we recognize that, God. And we, Father God, dare not, Father God, give you the glory for all that you have done. God, we give you thanks. We're like the leper that's coming back, oh God, who you've healed, God. Thank you. The one that's coming back to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you're yet going to do. God, be in the midst of this. Father God, as we preach the word, we ask God that your spirit will lead us and guide us. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that your word will touch our hearts. It will transform us. It will move us to the places, God, from where we are to where you want us to be. Consecrate me, Lord, for your service, by your power and your grace. That my soul will look to you, and only you with the steadfast hope, and that my will will be lost in yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pray these prayers with me, if you can, if you know them. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul, to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul, to take. God is great. God is good. And we thank you for this food. <laughs> With his hands, we are fed our daily bread. Amen. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Okay, y'all know a few things. Y'all know a few prayers. 
You know, once we have accepted Christ, one of the first things we are taught to do is pray. As children, we begin the journey with these simple prayers that we just prayed. And as we grow, we are encouraged to go deeper in our prayer life. As believers, we do a lot of praying, amen? And especially at St. Matthew. You know, it was funny that the last time Bishop came to preach at St. Matthew, we had a prayer before service and, and the ministers went to go pray with him. He was like, y'all praying again? I was like, yeah, we praying again. And I believe that it was our prayers mixed with his preaching that was the cause that led four people to Christ that very Sunday. <laughs> we, 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 we do a lot of praying. And it's clear that the Bible says, pray at all times without ceasing. But how can we be most effective in our prayers? How can we be most effective? Can I ask you a question on today? I just want to know, is there anybody out there that's been praying for anything? No, and I'm not just talking about you just prayed last night. I'm talking about has anybody been praying for a couple months or even a year for something? And you had those snot nose, ugly face type prayers where you were just tears dreaming. I mean, is it, I want to know, <laughs> is there anybody out there that's been praying for something? You've been praying maybe for a promotion or praying that that loved one may give their life to Christ. Praying that God would heal you or someone connected to you. Praying that God would end this pandemic. Hello. <laughs> Anybody praying that prayer? Praying that God would change the heart of our country's leadership. Or just change the leadership altogether. Whatever you got, you know, that's your will. Let that be. <laughs> praying uh, for a business. Uh, praying uh, for your ministry to grow, praying for home ownership, praying for a mode of transportation, praying that God would deliver you from a physical, emotional, psychological, economical, or relational bondage. Anybody been praying for, anybody been waiting on God? I just, you can, you can raise your hand, give me a thought, an amen. Just let me know, is there anybody that's been praying for something? looking for God to hear your prayer. Can I ask you another question? How have you prayed those prayers? If you take an inventory of the last time you got on your knees and how you communicated with God, how did you pray? What did you say? What was the words that you said? How did you structure your prayer? Now, in no way am I saying that there's one right way to pray. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, that I'm not even saying that the way you pray is wrong. Please don't get me wrong. What I want you to let you know is I want to offer you a way to pray that could bring a greater sense of structure to your prayers that would perhaps leave you with a greater sense of hope when you leave that prayer and have some sense of knowing that God has heard your prayers. Is that all right? Can I, can I offer you that today? Is that okay? Can I do that on today? To do so, I believe that the Lord's prayer can help us. I hear what you're saying now, Pastor. Look, you didn't have me get up, put on my clothes, okay, put some halfway decent on, on the top anyway. I don't know what's happening down there, you know. You know. <laughs> and you want to preach a whole sermon 
And knowing you, Pastor, you're going to do a whole series on the Lord's Prayer. Do, do you know, Pastor, what I'm going through? Do you know the stuff that I'm dealing with? <laughs> do you know what's happening in our world? And you want to come and preach about the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I do. I think that it can help us in all those areas, in our individual lives, in our pursuit to fulfill our purpose in our pursuit to make this community <laughs> and this country a better place. I believe the Lord's prayer can help us. Now, understand that the Lord's prayer is not a magical formula that if you just repeat it word for word, then all your dreams will come true. I don't know. But it is a model for us to shadow. You've got to pray between the lines. You know how people say read between the lines? Understand the deeper meaning of what it is? Well, we got to use the Lord's prayer and pray between the lines. Understand what God was talking about in this passage of scripture. So let's look at verse 1. It says, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to John and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. <laughs> now, I know you've been in church. Some of y'all may be in church for a minute. And you've been praying your whole life. But have you ever asked God to teach you how to pray? Have you ever asked your pastor or your bishop or your class leader? Have you ever asked some spiritual leader, teach, you know what? Can you teach me how to pray? Have you ever asked that of anybody? <laughs> I, I, I said, well, pastor, I learned how to pray by listening to my mama, listening to my pastor, listening to my, that's how I learn. And that's good. That's, that's good. That, that's a way to learn. But how many know that you can imitate your mama shout, but if the Holy Spirit ain't hit you, then you just playing with the spirit. Hello. <laughs> Anybody used to practice and, and, and as, as kids make funny those who were shouting? Anybody? Ever, I, yeah, we did that. Is <laughs> yeah, we did that as kids. So, 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 what, what, what are you saying? I'm saying that you got to learn how to pray the way God has given it to you. I'm saying that when you ask God to teach us how to pray, you're not asking him to teach you to pray like your mama or teach you to pray like the pastor. He can pray. That pastor, he can pray. No, no. <laughs> you're asking God to give you the tools, the words, the heart, the motive, the strength that will best support your spiritual growth and development. And I saw you, I saw you raise your hand right here. I saw you when I said this, because that's in my sermon uh, uh, class leader. Because I, I noticed that one thing that my class leader does is always start her prayer off with, teach me how to pray. Come on now, come on. I didn't even know what she was doing, for real. <laughs> Every time she starts, somewhere in the beginning, she said, look, she takes a minute. She takes a second <laughs> and say, God, <laughs> teach me mm, how to pray. Teach me how to pray for who I'm about to pray for. Because I don't want to start praying out of my own flesh. 
Hello, somebody. I uh, don't want to start praying out of anger. I don't want to start praying because it sounds good or I heard somebody else say it. But God, teach me what to say because God, you know what they need more than I do. <laughs> you know what I need, what I need more than I do. So do y'all know that the Holy Spirit is working in us when we begin to pray? And if you allow the Holy Ghost to use you, you will pray things that you had no idea that they needed. You will begin to pray for stuff. And they say, how did you know I was going through that? I was just following the Holy Ghost. Do you know that the Holy Ghost works? When we allow him to use us and be selfless and lay our hands and connect with our brothers. Any, okay. Because sometimes we're going to be praying, so I'm like, we ain't told you that. Stop putting our business. We ain't told you that. How did you know? But that's the Holy Ghost, y'all. Some of y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Anybody know that the Bible says when you don't know what to say, even when you don't know what to say, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost knows what to say. And even when we don't have the words to say, the Holy Ghost is interpreting our groanings. Can I, I can, uh. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. So I think the first thing we need to do <laughs> when we're praying between the lines, the first step we need to take, the first thing we need to do is ask God, teach me how to pray. If you're taking notes, that's your first one right there. Teach me how to pray. And I, and I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care uh, 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 how, how, how well you know the scriptures. The Holy Ghost will use you right where you are. Luke chapter 12, verse 12 says, when you are brought before the synagogues and the rulers, and authorities. Don't worry about how you will defend yourself or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you. Somebody here. The Holy Ghost will teach you at that time what to say. When you brought before the authorities and the, and I don't care what your authority or, or ruler that you may face, where, whether it's somebody trying to destroy your ministry or, or it's cancer trying to destroy your body. I don't care how insurmountable the situation is. You don't have to know the scriptures. You maybe have been saved for a week. You may have been saved for 50 years. When you are in trouble, don't you worry about what to say. Just ask the Holy Ghost to, to teach you what I need to say right now. Because God, I, I'm in trouble and I need the Holy Ghost to, to teach me what to say. The Bible says the Holy Spirit helps in our weakness. So we don't know, when we don't know what God wants us to pray, the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Anybody was coming against an authority or a ruler and you just felt like a cuss out spirit in your it's like a you know like oh god I'm <laughs> and you had to say to yourself holy ghost Holy Ghost, teach me what to say right now. 
<laughs> because if I do, I'm not going to represent you well. I, I, I'm just not. I'm going to say some things that that's what you got to, that's seriously, seriously, that's what you have to do. Holy Ghost, teach me what to say. Let's, let's move on. Next, Jesus gives us a tips, gives us a tip on how to start the prayer. Verse two, beginning of verse two says, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. First thing I see is that he st Jesus started with God interests rather than his own. So that tells me to don't start my prayer with what I want. But start my prayer off with what God likes. All right? Like, how it be thy name? <laughs> May your name be kept holy. See, the name of God is used for all the attributes of his being, right? In other words, his name is who he is. That's why you can't pray like your mama prayed because you gotta know who he is to you. Who has he been? He, to me, he's been wonderful. So his name is wonderful. To me, he's been mighty. So <laughs> he's been mighty. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, huh? Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting, oh, I wish I had some high reading saint, the everlasting father, the prince, that's, that's, that's the, his name shall be called. So when we say, hallowed be thy name, or may your name be kept holy, we are saying, may who you are continue to be reverenced and respected. May we continue to give you all the worship that you deserve. No matter what happens in my life, your name oh, is still wonderful. No matter how bad, I, I wish I had somebody, no matter how bad I feel right now, your name is still mighty. Even when all hell is breaking loose in my life, in my family, in this country, let your name continue to be glorified and get all the praise that it deserves. So what are you saying? I'm saying first you gotta ask God to teach you how to pray. Second thing you gotta do when you go before God in prayer is begin with the praise. I don't care how bad you feel. Muster up something out your mouth. Before you start spouting out what you need, to say, God, you know what? You still sit on the throne. I wish I had somebody to give God a praise right in the midst of what you're going through. God, you're still working. Even, even though I'm coming to you burdened, you still sit on the throne. Anybody hear what I'm saying on today? Is anybody hearing? What I, okay. So while I'm talking about praise, can anybody just give God a, a praise just right there? Can we, can we just give God a praise just right where you are? Can, can we just bless him? <laughs> I know your mama and your auntie say that he's good, but I want to know, is there anybody have tried him for yourself? I, 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 uh. I know your mama and your, but has God done, uh, woo, has God done anything, uh, My God, has he done anything for you? And that's where you begin. That's where you begin. That's, you begin to think, when I look back over, oh, y'all have to excuse me, your eyes. And all the things, woo! 
that he brought me through. My soul can't help but cry out and say, hallelujah, thank God. Is there anybody that God, I don't know why you're looking at me. You might as well take a second and take a look back over your life and all the ways he's protected you and all the ways he's kept you. You should have been dead, sleeping in your grave, out of your mind, but God still kept you. Can we give God a praise? Because even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still working. He's still moving. He's still healing. He's still delivering. Can we just give God some glory? Hallelujah. Woo! He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy, y'all. Woo! So just, just begin with a praise. Just <laughs> start off praise. You might know what I'm talking about on today. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're going to teach God how to ask God to teach me how to pray and then begin with the praise. The next thing we see in verse, in the second part of verse two says, may your kingdom come soon. Y'all see how we lining this up with the Lord's prayer? Y'all see how we, all right. So we, may your kingdom come soon. We talked about last year in our kingdom training. You might remember? Yeah, go take, go back a little bit. On Wednesday night kingdom training, we talked about the kingdom. And, and we came up with the definition of the kingdom of God. Anybody remember what that is, uh, what the kingdom of God is? Kingdom of God is the reign and the rule of God in the hearts and in the minds of men. The rule and the reign of God in the heart, the rule and his reign in the hearts and minds of the people right here on this earth. This is what God desires first and foremost, that his kingdom would be advanced here on earth. You understand that, right? You understand this is a battle between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And, and, and it's, it's the father's desire that his kingdom be advanced, be spread by you and me. <laughs> That's his desire. So again, before we start asking for anything, we say, may your kingdom come soon. It's his desire that everyone comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and to grow in his ways. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. First. <laughs> and all of his righteousness. Then all these, you got to seek the kingdom first. Before all these things are added unto you. Uh, before you begin to add, you got to seek the kingdom's will first. So before you make your little request for your new pair of shoes. <laughs> Make sure that your overall desire is the kingdom first. May your kingdom come soon. May your kingdom come in the hearts and minds of every person on earth. And if you really want God to hear your prayer, let your request be in alignment with helping somebody else to know who Jesus is. Let your request <laughs> be to help somebody else. Let your request be advanced to be advanced the kingdom of God. And I promise that your prayer will be answered. Oh, I asked you, is there anybody praying for anything? I, I, I asked you at the very beginning. Is what you've been praying for 
will it advance the kingdom? <laughs> or will it advance you solely? First John 5 and 14 says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask for anything, according to his will, he hears us. So let me, I want this job because I want to use the gift that you've given me on the job so that ultimately I can help somebody know who Jesus is. Or I can at least show the love of Christ. <laughs> Are you in? Okay. I, I want to raise so I can use the money to help somebody. Uh oh. I want the healing in my body so I can stay alive and keep telling folks about the goodness. Oh. Uh -huh. Gee, that's why I want to stay. That's why I want it. Not because I can do me, but God, I want to keep doing you. That's why I want to stay. So that's why I want the healing in my. My prayer, God, is not that you curse the one who hurt me. Uh oh. But my prayer is that you use me to help the person who hurt me, huh? So that they will be changed by the love of Jesus. It's getting too deep, it's getting deep. It's getting, uh, I lost some amens, I lost my amens right there. Before you ask for anything from God, make sure whatever it is uh, that your prayer is lining up with the kingdom agenda. I will go so far to say, if your request does not line up, don't waste your breath. If your prayer is that God will kill all the racists and do away with all the bad police and everybody, every enemy you can't stand, just smite them, just do away with them. I'm sure that's not his will. <laughs> somebody said to me this week, somebody said, God gave us free will. And he gave them the free will to be racist. And he gave us the free will to indulge in some of the sins that we indulge in. So if he got to kill them, if he got to punish them, if he's got, he got to do the same thing. If he got to throw them away, he got to do the very same thing to you. Hello. It's not his will that he kill all the bad people, but it's his will that the people who know about Christ's love go and show the folks who have never known it, who've never seen it. And that's how you would advance the kingdom. Not by saying, oh, I got my stuff. I got me. Or to you, what God has given you. All right, I'm gonna move on, y'all. Rolling your eyes. I mean, first thing we gotta do is <laughs> teach, ask God to teach me how to pray. Second thing, begin prayer with the praise. And then third, acknowledge the kingdom. Agenda. Acknowledging the kingdom agenda is recognizing that it's God's desire that everybody be saved. You understand what I'm saying? That's his pro. Before, I know you want your stuff and I know you want your shoes and this and that. But God wants to primarily use you to advance his kingdom on your job. Not so, so you can make money and get what you want but that you can use the gifts and the skills and the talents and the influence that he's giving you to tell somebody else in your realm of influence who he is. Are you feeling me? Now, here's the good part. Now, pastor, I still want, I still want to be blessed. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> 
your life probably will be blessed because you align your prayer requests with the kingdom agenda. Are you hear what I'm saying? You probably will get a raise. You probably will get a better promotion. You probably will have good health. You probably will be stable in some relationships, a better place to live. You probably will when you ask God to do the things he wants. Anybody glad about that? <laughs> that when you take care of his stuff, oh my God, y'all ain't believing that. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't believing that. When you take care of his stuff, do I got just one witness? I just need one. That when you do for God, God will do for you. You better believe. <laughs> My God. All right, let's, 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 I got one more for you and I'll leave you alone today. Look at uh, verse three. It says, give us each day the food we need. All right. Now we get to the good stuff. Now, all right. <laughs> now, now, how many steps do we have to take before we begin to open our mouths to ask God for anything? How many took a few steps for us to <laughs> get there? We said, ask God to teach us how to pray. Begin prayer with the praise. Acknowledge the kingdom agenda. Finally, present your request. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Anybody see that by petition, by earnest and, and thanksgiving, present your request to God. So the text says, give us each day the food that we need. Give us this day our daily bread. This is not only a request for the physical need for food, but it encompasses all the necessities of life. When we say, give us this day, we're not just praying to enjoy the bread. <laughs> we're praying that he give us everything we need to help us enjoy the bread. And praying against everything that would Hinder, hinder us or interfere with us enjoying the bread. So what are you saying? Uh, when you pray to God, don't just pray for the dough and the oven. Let's put the dough in. But pray for the house to put the oven and the bread in. And you hear what I'm saying? Don't, don't just pray for the dough. Don't just pray for the oven, but pray for the house to put the oven in. Anybody? Oh, y'all ain't hear me one day. I said, if your prayer is in the will of God, oh, you might as well go for the ropes. <laughs> go for the ropes. Don't just pray for that one to be saved. But pray that God will save the whole family. That God would bring them and join them to the body of believers. That God would use their gifts and talents to end up leading somebody else to Christ. Don't just pray for their salvation, but go all the way to the end. Pray that God will bless everybody. And then go and say, anybody hear what I'm saying on today? Anybody hearing? Don't just pray for the ministry or the business or for the nonprofit so that you can help a few folks. But if your prayer, if we've gone through all the steps and your prayer is in the will of God, it acknowledges the kingdom. It's what God wants. Pray that God will use not just you, but that he will connect you with the whole team of folks that will help do what God is calling you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That it will not only help the community, but it will help people 
on an international level? Is anybody praying for anything? If you pray for something and you know it's in the will of God, extend it, push a little further. <laughs> Look at how, look how what God look how God can use that thing to not just the people that you think, but but expand your mind and see how God can use it to bless a multitude of people. Are you hearing what I'm saying on today? Go a little deeper. Go a little further. If your prayer is in the will of God, He said, "Ask anything in my will, and I will give it to you." Okay. I want to know, Saint Matthew, have you been praying? Trustee board, have you been praying? Huh? Because the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful. Hmm. But the workers are few. God has called you to something, my friend. There's a harvest that God wants you to reap. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a harvest that God wants us to reap collectively as well as individually. There's a harvest that he wants you to reap. And the Bible says it's hard to find folks who you connect with. It's hard to find folks who will connect with the vision. It's hard to find folks who are willing to work. It's hard to find folks. Trustee board, can I get a witness? It's hard to find folks. <laughs> God already told you that. Yeah, he said it's hard. He already said the harvest is plain. There's much to be done. And there's much blessing for you to receive. But what I need you to do is pray to the Lord of the harvest. To send the workers into the harvest field. St. Matthew, I want to know, have you been praying? That's all I've been asking you to do. Have you been praying that God will send workers into the harvest? Have you been praying, steward board? Have you been praying ministers, music ministry? How have you been praying class leaders? that God will send the workers to reap the harvest that God has for you. Prayer ministry, have you been asking God? Have you been praying to the Lord of the harvest? Have you started your prayer? Have you asked God, first of all, to teach you how to pray? <laughs> Maybe we just need to start that God teach us how to pray. Lord. Woo! God, mm, right now, right, even right now, God. Teach us, Lord, how to pray, Jesus. For we realize, oh God, that you have a harvest for us, oh God, that there's work to be done, God, that there's much, Father, there's many people who need to know who you are, God. There's many people, God, who need to know who you are, who need to know, God, that there's a light. So teach us, oh God, how to pray. I hope you even pray right. Just pray with me right now. God, teach us how, put down a pen and just pray with me right now. God, say, teach us how to pray wherever you are. God, teach us what to say. Teach us, oh God, the words, God. We need to say, teach us, oh God, not to curse God, but to bless, oh God. Teach us, oh God, not to pray out of anger, oh God, but to pray, oh God, out of your love. Teach us, oh God, how to pray, God. We need you to teach us, Lord, what to say. Holy Spirit, we give you the room to work in us even right now. Holy Spirit, we give you the space to use us. Holy Spirit, come in right now. Come into our heart. Come into our minds. Come into our spirit. Holy Spirit, come in and use us, oh God. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, oh God, how to pray. 
Oh God, for so many need to know who you are. God, and we just go to thanking you, Lord. God, we start, God, with a praise, God. We thank you first, God, for saving us. Thank you, Jesus. When we didn't deserve it, God. When we were out there, oh God, doing all kinds of stuff that we had no, God, you, you kept us, you, you, you grabbed us, oh God. We thank you for your grace, your provenient grace that was there even before we knew you. Thank you, Lord, for leading us to you. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for causing somebody, for using somebody to tell us about the gospel message. Thank you, Jesus, for using somebody to tell us about who you are. Thank you, for Jesus, for using somebody to show us your love. We thank you, God. Oh, God, we acknowledge your kingdom, God. We know, Lord, that it is your will that you want every person on earth to know who you are, Father God, that you want to be in relationship, oh God, with everybody, oh God. We know, oh God, that it is your desire, oh God, that they will know, oh God, who Jesus is. And that is our desire, Lord. That's our desire, God. We want your ways, God. We want your thoughts, God. Father God, we know that it's your desire, God, and thus it is our desire. So God, we present our prayer request to you, oh God. Use us, oh God in the spaces that we're in. Father God, use us, oh God. Father God, even though, oh God, we're in a pandemic situation, oh God, Father God, we're still connected, oh God, virtually, electronically, God, even to the people that are in our very home, oh God. Use us, Father God, as a light to share the message of who you are. Use us, oh God, to help advance your kingdom. Use us, oh God, to help us do your will. Father God, as, as we continue to build, God, as we continue to grow, as we continue to move, let your Holy Spirit, oh God, lead us and guide us and strengthen us and give us all that we need to complete, Father God, this build, both in our individual lives, Father God, and both, Father God, collectively. God, bless our people. God, bless this country, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch God. Mm, mm, mm. Father God, that you allow this COVID-19 to cease in the name. God, send your healing hand across this world, Jesus. The cases will begin to go down. Father God, send your healing hand on those, Father God, who are going through the very situation right now. Send your healing, oh my God, your healing hand and touch God. The one who don't know if they're going to make it. Father God, send your healing hand. God, and touch this nation. God, touch our leadership, God. Continue, oh God, to use us to let your love flow. Father God, we ask you to touch, Father God, even the president, God. That you would give him the mind of Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus. That you would give him the heart to serve people and I serve himself. God, that you would give him, oh God, the will to do what's best for the people that you have caused him to steward over. Father God, that's our prayer today, Lord. And we thank you for this moment, for this hour to bring it before you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory for hearing our prayer, God. And we give you thanks and claim it done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you for joining us today. And we want to extend Christ to you. We know that Christ is the way, <laughs> that his love is the way, that his peace is the way. And then when you accept Christ, he gives you his ways to love to move in joy and to move in peace. And if you wanna accept Christ as your Lord and as your savior, we just ask that you will repeat these words. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and there is nothing that I can do to save myself. I confess my complete helplessness to forgive my own sin, to work my way to heaven. At this moment, I trust you. Jesus Christ, 
the one who bore my sins when you died on the cross. I believe Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and as a guarantee of my own resurrection. Father, come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. Now bless me with your Holy Spirit to continue to grow in your ways. Teach me to pray, to give you praise, and to acknowledge your kingdom first. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. We give God the praise for God sending that mighty word through our pastor this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praying between the lines. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much uh, for allowing God to use you in a mighty way this morning. Amen. Are y'all blessed right now? Do you feel blessed after hearing that word? Come on, give me some hand, virtual hand claps and thumbs up. How are you feeling right now? Amen. 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 Listen, we are going to continue to worship the Lord through our giving. Amen. Through our giving. You know, this is the only thing God told us to test them in. Did you know that? Only thing God told us to test them in. Test them. Test them with your tithe and your offering. Amen. There's three ways that you can give. The first is through Giveify, which is my favorite, personally. Come on, millennials. Where y'all at? Don't nobody, we don't use the checkbook. Oh, man. So we, my favorite is Givelify. If you download the Givelify app on your smartphone and then type in St. Matthew Casey, you'll see that picture pop up, our church logo and our pastor. And you just click and give. Amen. Then the second way you can give is via our website, stmatthewkc.org. And then the last way, if you don't trust uh, the digital universe and technology, you can come on and drop it off in the mail. Um, to St. Matthew AME Zion Church, 4400 East Linwood Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri, 64128. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we got a couple announcements as y'all are giving. As y'all are giving, let me get myself together. Please don't forget, we have prayer and Bible study um, on Wednesday evenings. Prayer starts at 530 and Bible study starts at 6 o'clock. Um, it has just been an awesome month. Um, we have been dealing with church hurt and it, um, we've been doing a series called um, Battle Wounds. You're dealing with church hurt, healing, and prevention. And right now we are in the prevention phase of our um, of our of our learning and of our session this month. Um, and I thank the Lord that I've been able to lead that uh, Bible study. And I pray that it has just been a blessing to all of you all. Please know that um, if you have missed any of the Bible studies, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can um, watch all of the Bible studies online. Also, you um, I will put in the link for um, part three um, if you need the visuals as well. So we hope that you would just please join us. Don't forget our, um, what our planning meeting is going to happen, y'all. Somebody pop on um, Sister Thais, can you pop on and tell us when that is one more time? It is August the 1st at 11 o'clock. Yes, August the 1st at 11 o'clock. Thank you so much. Please get on this link for our planning meeting as we go about the 2020-2021 conference year. And I'm also going to put um, the link to part three in the chat as well for those of us who are joining us on Zoom. I'll do that right now. Amen. If there aren't any other announcements, we thank you so much for worshiping us and we will close out with a benediction from our pastor. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Skinner, <clears throat> for leading us so well in worship today. Uh, again, it is good to see each of you all smiling faces. Good to see the babies feeling connected a little bit. <laughs> so we thank God for his presence. Uh, we pray that you continue to pray all throughout this week. You continue to join us in our prayer and fast this Wednesday uh, as we continue to um, sacrifice our flesh and continue to draw closer to God in the spirit. Uh, so we actually you to please join us uh, with that. Um, be a part of the prayer on as we pray at 5.30 and as we have our Bible study. One awesome Bible study uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, Reverend Skinner is doing a great job. This will be our last 
uh, I think last part series, if the Lord say so. Um, so please be a part of it. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and then finally, again, please be ready here. This All members, all leaders are planning meeting. Again, leaders, please have your dates submitted to Thais this week, um, no later than Tuesday, if you can, as we put together the calendar, as we put together the year, the vision, uh, please have that ready. Um, and we ask that you would be here Saturday at 11 o'clock. We don't hope to be long. Hope, hopefully that it will be abbreviated, um, but uh, we still have to continue to start off the year, and give you more information as far as what we're doing. So God bless you. Um, that's all I have. And let us bow our heads for the benediction. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, oh God, for, my, for teaching us how to pray, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, and I do continue to pray, oh God, for every prayer request, oh God, that your people, God, are requesting of you, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would hear the hearts of your people. Father God, that you would open up doors, God, that you open up the windows of heaven, oh God, and pour out your blessing upon your people. Father God, our desire is to do your work and your will. Father God, and we know, God, when we do your work, God, Father God, that you will bless us. So, Father God, we thank you for your final command that you've given us, that we strive to follow every day of our lives, and that is to go and make disciples of all nations everywhere, oh God, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You told us to teach these new disciples, your ways. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to live. Father God, and we thank you that you will be with us all the way to the end. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we thank God and said amen. Amen.